This is refractography. Stick around and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and in today's tutorial we're doing something very weird, very uh, experimental, very abstract. We're doing refractography and reflectography. They're two types of lensless photography, so everything that you just saw was shot without the use of a lens, directly captured by the camera's sensor. So with that in mind, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have a camera cleaning kit ready uh, because you're likely to need it after taking your lens off and shooting without your lens. Uh, you might get dust and things on your sensor, so uh, if you don't want to um, risk having little bits of dust, uh, make sure that you have uh, a blower ready to just clean off any of the uh, dust that might settle on your sensor while you're taking your shots. The way that these shots are achieved is uh, relatively simple actually. Uh, all we're doing is refracting and reflecting light uh, through glass objects like this uh, wine glass here. We're going to be um, reflecting and, and redirecting all of this light into our camera. Uh, so essentially our glass object will be acting as if it were a lens. Uh, we're going to be um, making sure that all of the light that hits uh, our object is then reflected back into our camera so that we can capture it. Obviously, the first thing you're going to need is a camera. This is my Sony a7 III, um, but you don't need a lens. I'm going to be taking this lens off as soon as we're ready to shoot uh, to expose the sensor. We're exposing it to our glassware. So I've got several different types of glass here um, and it should reflect and refract the light in some interesting ways into our sensor. So I'm excited to see what those will do. Uh, we do need a way to hold our glassware. So I've got a uh, retort stand here, uh, which I can easily use to position some glass and hold it in place. I've also got a couple of tripods. Uh, one is going to hold my camera and the other is going to hold my lighting. You can see that I've got a, uh, an Adapter Lux control pod attached to the top of here. and I've got lots of lighting arms at the ready. Now there's one last thing that we need to talk about with these lighting arms and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail. In a lot of our tutorials, I talk about the importance of controlling light, making sure that the only light in your image is the light that you're happy uh, being there, making sure there's no extra light spilling in from elsewhere. With this type of photography, uh, it's not just uh, a preference or a, a nice thing to be able to do is controlling your light. Uh, this is an absolute necessity. You're not going to be able to have any excess light uh, refracting around inside your glass and then coming into your, uh, into your camera because it's going to um, overpower any of the light that uh, is coming from your light source, the stuff that's going to cause those interesting uh, lines to appear and, and the strange effects to happen. The way that we're going to control our light is to shoot in a completely dark room and have only a very small, um, very specific and very far away point of light. I'm going to be using the Adapter Look Studio for this, uh, so I've got uh, a few lighting arms, um, but even our lighting arms are a little bit uh, too large for the source of light that we, we need. Um, they will spread out over a distance and uh, we don't really want that. We want to narrow them down to uh, the tightest beam possible and try and get all of the light that's coming out of these lighting arms to be as parallel as possible. So what that means is we need a little pinprick of uh, a point in the end of our lighting arm. So uh, Sam's 3D printed me these little uh, discs with a tiny little one millimeter hole in the middle of them. You probably can't even see this, uh, but there's other ways to do this as well. Um, I started out just by uh, putting a little hole into a piece of cardboard that fits underneath the um, the head of the lighting arm, this can be unscrewed. You can pop a little disc into uh, the end of your lighting arms and then they'll only be um, producing a tiny little hole, a little pinprick of light uh, out of the end of the arm. We can then put these uh, really far away. So we're talking um, probably uh, two to three meters away from our camera. 
This means that uh, the pinpoint of light in relation to the camera is very, very small. All of the light that is hitting our um, our glassware is as parallel as we can practically get it. Uh, this means that all of the light that is then reflecting around and into the camera is uh, going to be uh, nice and uniform and uh, hopefully give us the sharpness that we're looking for. I know that's quite a lot, but the things to remember here are you need a small pinpoint of light and you need it to be far away, pointing directly at your glass. So my camera is sat here with no lens attached, uh, the, uh, the sensor is exposed which gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit but for this uh, it's absolutely necessary and it is worth the, uh, the little extra time cleaning the sensor afterwards because it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've got my wine glass sat here in the retort stand and I've got my lighting sat about three meters away over in the distance. Uh, now some of you are probably thinking that tiny little pinpoint of light, uh, that's not a lot of light. Uh, how are you going to be exposing for this? Well, we might be doing some long exposures, um, uh, but they're not going to be excessively long because you need to remember that we don't have a lens. Our aperture is essentially uh, huge at this point, so we're capturing a huge amount of light simply by exposing the sensor to everything. Uh, that means that we're going to get a lot of light from any light that is present. That also means that you're going to need to darken your room. Right now this room is very, very bright. I've got video lights going. Uh, it's daytime, so I've got light coming in through the windows. Um, I'm going to have to uh, make an attempt to block out all of my windows, turn out all of my lights, even things like my, uh, my little home sensor here is going to be creating just little pinpoints of light from little various LEDs and my TV and things like that all have these little LEDs and because of the amount of light that we're going to be capturing without a lens all of that is going to affect our shot. There's two different types of lensless photography that we're doing today. We have reflectography and refractography. Uh, the distinction is uh, mostly semantics and how you set up your, your uh, lighting, your camera and your glass object um, because the results are fairly similar. There are some small differences, um, but I'd encourage you to go and experiment and see which kind of setup and result you prefer. Reflectography is a little bit easier to get your head around because it's quite simply reflecting light off uh, a shiny object like our piece of glass here. Um, the bottom of the wine glass, uh, for instance, you can set this up at a 45 degree angle uh, to your camera and to your lighting and bounce your lighting off the bottom into your camera. It's quite simple and the, the shape of the bottom of the glass here is going to determine what kind of shapes you get in your image. Refractography is a little bit different uh, and you need to understand a little bit about refraction in order to understand what's happening. Refraction means uh, the bending of light when it enters an object of a different density. So uh, obviously our glass is more dense than the air surrounding us. So when the uh, light hits our glass and transitions inside the glass, it's going to bend ever so slightly. It'll bend and bounce around all of these uh, different uh, areas of the glass and eventually it's going to make its way out again. So the way that we're going to set up for refractography is to put our light directly in front of the camera and our object between the light and the camera. This means that the light will enter our wine glass, it'll travel around inside here in all sorts of weird and mysterious ways and bounce out the other end uh, in a sort of different form and that's what's going to create all of those uh, different lines and you'll maybe even be able to see the spectrum split out a little bit if you're using white light. So this is an example of my uh, refractography setup. I've got my um, camera in line with my glass object and then all the way over here I have my little light source with that tiny little blue pinprick in the end of it. That's giving me some blue light refra refracting around inside my glass and then into my camera sensor. For my uh, reflectography, uh, things are slightly different. I've moved my camera around to the side. I've changed the, uh, the angle that my uh, glassware is facing my camera and my light source is still all the way over here. So now the light is going to bounce off the end of here and into the camera. 
Both of these techniques are equally interesting, equally valid, and uh, equally experimental. So I do recommend giving both types a go. See what works best for you, your environment, your light source, um, and the results that you want to find. A lot of the shots that you're seeing in this video were actually taken with multiple light sources. I'm using the coloured lighting arms of the Adapts Look Studio to have uh, several points of light. That almost doubles up the uh, the effects that you're seeing. They refract in the same way, but they're slightly offset from one another. Whether or not you prefer that, it's up to you, but I actually really like the different colours uh, interacting with, with one another and the way that they move around as you move the glass or the camera. Uh, it sort of forms and destroys these, uh, these structures of light. It looks very sci-fi and certainly very abstract. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to get some really interesting abstract shots uh, without using a lens. I think it's a really interesting way of shooting that uh, not a lot of people really consider because uh, obviously taking your lens off and leaving your sensor exposed is a bit of a no-no most of the time. Uh, but for uh, creative purposes, I think we can uh, make an exception. I do have a lens cleaning kit and uh, my little blower here at the ready to give my sensor a dust off. Um, if you're going to give this type of photography a go, do let me know down in the comments. I really want to know how you guys get on, uh, whether it's as fun as I've made it out to be. Uh, I really think it's quite a, an interesting excursion into the abstract, so do let me know if you give it a go. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to give it a like and hit the subscribe button uh, for lots more tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. For now though guys, that's all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.